Welcome all of you for being here this morning on this beautiful sunshiny day. It's wonderful to see all of your faces and um, just ask you to continue to worship with us this morning.
so thankful that where our sin is your grace is also there because without you we're lost and that song speaks so perfectly to the fact that when we sin your grace is there and where you are we're free Thank you for that. Thank you for, for loving us in our sin and for loving us through it. Lord, we thank you for being here with us today. We thank you for receiving 
our worship. And Lord, thank you for continuing to be with us throughout this day and for, for speaking to our hearts today. In your name we pray, amen. And thanks, brother. Yes, you can have it. <laughs> thanks. Hey, what a beautiful space and what a beautiful opportunity to be together as we pursue God uh, through His Word and through uh, what He would have, have us uh, wrestle with today. God, of course, is our beautiful and wonderful Savior, and we we cling to him and we pursue him. Uh, he has the remedy for us and uh, he, he created us. He desires relationship with us. And so today we're going to talk about the next component of this. Of course, we're just finishing off an Easter season that was 
fabulous. As we talked about the light of the world and how Jesus came to rescue us and, and to, to call us to even greater things. And then he calls us that we get the opportunity to be the light of the world and to go out and use our gifts and the ways that God has purposed and, and desires to use us. And so uh, a way that we saw this very tangibly was last week. And, and once again, uh, twice a year, there's an event that we help lead in our community called Community Impact Weekend, where businesses, organizations, and churches come together, individuals from all over uh, come together to work in our community to make it a better place, to help out at the schools, to help out at different nonprofits, to help out with different opportunities uh, and, and uh, fill different needs. So you guys... Uh, uh, did this so very well last week. And if you missed it last week, well, again, we have opportunity the first weekend in, in November and the last weekend of April. And this is just an ongoing thing. And so whether it's those weekends or otherwise, let's continue to build into our community. I did want to highlight a couple cool things that I saw as I did a journey around on Impact Weekend. Uh, here at Waypoint, we had an event that, let's call it Plarning at Waypoint, okay? And I, I know you probably scratch it just like me. Like, Plarn, okay, what is that? P-L-A-R-N, and it's, a, it's plastic yarn, if you will. And uh, I understand it's not knitting, it's crocheting for my experts here. I'm making sure I'm representing this well because I'm not an expert at this. But uh, we had over 50 people in, in the point of all ages cutting plastic bags, uh, creating this this yarn that would be used to uh, make these bags for disaster relief at work, and the way that these things are used, they're great because they're recycled. Uh, they don't they don't cost anything. They don't you know it's stuff that's being thrown away, landfills or or otherwise. And it's uh, it's taking these things that were useless and making them useful. So now, and and even this past weekend with the flooding, uh, you know, just just south of us in southeast Michigan. Uh, with the flooding there, some of these bags that were created were taken there because they're waterproof, because they're sturdy, because they're helpful for families that need a place to store stuff. A, pl uh, a trash bag isn't going to work and, and all that. But you guys coming together to, to create this, working with our partner, Draw Disaster Relief at Work, helped create these things. And then some of them were delivered even yesterday and the day before. Cool, cool stuff. Uh, draw, some people went uh, to draw and packed buckets there for disaster relief uh, at work and, and different, different buckets that they use. Some of you guys checked out Oakland Hope, and Oakland Hope has some big things going on. They have a new facility that they have now purchased and are working towards, and so some of you guys helped out on that. Some big needs, uh, you've heard about uh, this, this move, and some big needs that are, are needed there over the next weeks and months. So. Please watch for ways that we can help our dear partner, Oakland Hope, as they help people in crisis. Uh, some of you guys were at uh, Pine Knob Elementary helping uh, beautification there. And, and then some of you guys uh, did what we call a rake and run. And we had many of our teens and, and, uh, and, and people go to different houses and rake up and clean up uh, people's yards. Uh, Clarkson Family Farm, we had a presence there and some people going out there. Even the food service uh, for, for people that... Um, uh, that served. We had a big celebration on Sunday afternoon. Some of you guys helped out with that. Just ways of being in the community. And you guys, this is such a core of who we are and who we want to be. So thank you for participating. Thank you for praying. Thank you for donating uh, your, your time, your resources for this. We look forward to the next uh, community weekend, and we look forward to opportunities now and, and throughout. So, uh, so we're so thankful for this. Again, coming up in the first weekend of November, not too soon to promo this. But, uh, but along these lines, uh, I want to highlight, um, have you ever been around somebody who is an expert at something? And I, I mean, not just somebody who's watched a few YouTube videos and kind of can tinker around. That's kind of my, my category. But somebody who really, really knows what they're doing. I mean, whether it be a chef, knowing what ingredients to add, knowing when to add them, what temperature things ought to be, you know, and, and just this uh, orchestrating, just this, this uh, amazing uh, smorgasbord of stuff coming together to a delicious meal. Uh, or whether it be a, a gardener or, uh, you know, I, I want to mention uh, a friend of mine, and I want to keep him uh, anonymous, so I'll just say, let's call him uh, T. Traver. 
No, 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 never mind, never mind. Uh, let, let me go with Todd T, okay? So uh, Community Impact Weekend is the, uh, is the topic, and so we've built relationships through this and being in our community. So we got friends at, our, uh, at uh, Pine Knob Elementary, We've, we've uh, developed this relationship, and uh, my friend Todd T has been out there a few times, and they know his expertise. So they had a specific need, and uh, they actually asked for him by name. Uh, and, and again, I'll keep him anonymous as best as I can here. Uh, but they asked for him by name because uh, they, they knew his skill set, and, and uh, so he's helping them out with a, a special project on their entryway that they, uh, they wanted to make sure was done right. And so this is about uh, using our, our giftings, using what God has given to us. And, and you guys, this exists throughout this room throughout this congregation. This is what we're talking about today. So whether you're one of our children uh, doing the kids musical for the, the, the last time this weekend, whether you're somebody who's, a, who's gifted at, at handiwork, whether you're somebody who's gifted, gifted at being present with people and having the conversations, wh whatever your gifting is, God has a purpose for every single one of us. And part of the joy of life's journey is to dive into this. And so we're, we're going to talk about this. And so, uh, you know, it's great to be around somebody who is a, an expert at something and, and, and does these things well. Um, but God is the ultimate strategist. Okay, God is the ultimate expert. And God is the one orchestrating this amazing tapestry of human existence and his relationship with humankind. Orchestrating our lives and the way that he knits us together. That as we talked about, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. God knows what he's doing. And in the part of God's rescue plan, he had a purpose for, for everything, for each prophet that came, for each scripture that was written, for each, uh, each person that contributed to this, the different, uh, you know, uh, God's people pursuing him, sharing with the world that needs to know God's love and God's purposes. So in that, Jesus came, lived the perfect life, and died on a cross. He paid the ultimate price once and for all in God orchestrating this amazing story of human existence and our need to have our sins forgiven. Jesus, light of the world, was the way for all of this. But what happened after Jesus rose from the grave, after the light of the world conquered death, was a story done and, and not even close because God, in his great plan in orchestrating all this, had, had a purpose right after that and has a purpose for us today. So right after Jesus ascends into heaven, we have this great verse of scripture that we've used so many times as we at Waypoint seek to connect with people and serve them where they are and give them hope through Jesus. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this is part of God's purpose for his people after Jesus rose from the grave, after, after he uh, ascended into heaven. He said, this is God's plan, that we would be his witnesses. So a key part of this, we will receive power when the Holy Spirit, who is this Holy Spirit? Uh, why, why is it so important that Jesus says this before this command that, that we need to be his witnesses? Well, uh, the, the Holy Spirit is a, a person, is part of the Trinity, is, is God in essence. That we believe through, uh, the church through centuries and through scripture and our belief as free Methodists, we believe that God is one. That God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit form God, the Trinity, this, uh, this important concept. Huge concept, much to be said on this. If you have questions, love to have this conversation. Or a shameless plug is June 1 and June 8th is a membership class. Great time to talk about this. Uh, we'll see you there. Uh, Sharon and I will be uh, uh, leading this. But mark your calendars, details in the bulletin. But, uh, but the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. 
and, uh, and didn't just show up on the scene, uh, has always existed, just as God has always existed. Genesis 1, uh, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of of the waters. In the very first uh, verses of Scripture, we see God present through His Holy Spirit. Uh, and so uh, Jesus, as part of His mission, was to, to live the perfect life, die for our sins, and to rise again, and then to send forth God the Holy Spirit to work in and through us. And He speaks on this. John 16, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I mean, Jesus is sharing this with his closest friends, with the people that he's poured his life into. And they, he's mentioned to them, I, I'm going to die, I'm going you know, I'm, I'm to suffer, I'm going to be killed, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away and prepare a place for you. And, and they're grieving about this. And his words to them is he says, I'm telling you, it's for your good. It's to your advantage that, that Jesus uh, ascends into heaven and, and God the Holy Spirit works in these unique ways in today's uh, uh, part of uh, God's plan. So Jesus is saying, this is for your good. So with this, I want, I want to let you know that as you pursue your purposes, as you say, okay, God, how have you knit me together? And the question we're going to wrestle with a, a little bit today is, God, what spiritual gifts have you given to me? This, this is a, an important concept I want you to know, that if you have trusted in Jesus as your Lord, God has given you his Holy Spirit, a manifestation of his presence in a unique way to you, that you have, you are able to walk in step with God's Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.25 says, if we live by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Holy Spirit. And, and we're called to live our lives this way. We know from Scripture that we are a temple of God's Holy Spirit, that we're called to, to let God use us and work in and through us. And again, just this concept that we believe near and dear to our hearts here at Waypoint, every person has a purpose. This is why we value life so very much. Doesn't matter what age, doesn't matter where, what nationality, what, where you come from, uh, we value life because we see God having a purpose for every human being. And so uh, part of the journey is a joy of discovery of this. So let's live this out. Let's pursue God in this. And then let's trust him in this. Because again, if we live by the Spirit, Let's keep in step with the Spirit. A couple factors in that. First is the, uh, the direction that we go. It's not our ideas and our leading, but let's pursue God and see, God, through your Holy Spirit, would you lead me on the paths that I should go? Would you keep me away from the paths I should not take? And then it's also a matter of pace. You know, if I'm, if I'm walking a trail with a friend, if I'm trying to keep in step with them, I'm, I'm not running ahead and losing sight. I'm not lagging behind, but I'm keeping the cadence, the pace that my friend who is leading me is leading. And so this is, a, for me, in walking with God, in, in seeking to walk in step with his Holy Spirit, there's a, there's a big word that's a huge factor on this, uh, and it's key on our journey, and it's trust. Because if we say, God, I want you to lead me, not my ideas, but yours, not my way, but yours, not, not my, my choices, but yours, I submit to you, God. When we do that, we need to trust God. Because there's times where God is going to lead us on, on the mountaintop and it's going to be this great, great part of the journey. And, and we're going to say, life has never been better. But there's times where God might lead us into difficult times, might lead us through uh, consequences of our own sin and, and our own wrong choices, but, but God will help us navigate those or otherwise the, con the consequences from other people's sin. 
or other evils around us, but we've got to trust that God knows best for us as we live day by day. It's a difficult thing, but this is part of God being our leader. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let me share an example from Scripture with us. And one of our main passages is Acts chapter 8. Uh, and we'll see um, a, a person by the name of Philip, an early follower of Jesus, and part of his journey. Okay? And after Jesus ascended into heaven, you know, things were, were great for the, the early church in, in many ways. I mean, there's, you know, this energizing. The disciples went from being afraid to courageous. I mean, so many of them were willing to risk their lives and tell everybody, even, even when people said, you need to stop speaking about Jesus. They said, judge for yourselves whether it's right to obey you or whether it's right to obey God. We can't help it. Jesus rose from the grave. We need to tell people. Early church thrived, okay? And then came a significant event that hurt uh, the church it, from an outsider's point of view, and that was uh, an early follower of Jesus being martyred, and that was Stephen. Speaking, about, speaking up about Jesus, Stephen was killed, and those who were against Jesus and against the church became even more bold, and a great persecution started where people were hating Christians, followers of Jesus, persecuting them, trying to put them in jail and beyond. So Acts chapter 8 captures some of this. You know, that would be bad news for us, but those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. You guys, how cool is that? Like, hey, here's a great persecution that happens from religious leaders, from other, other people, outsiders and whatnot. This persecution happens. People are hating the fact that people are mentioning about Jesus. And so they, they spread from the persecution and they keep sharing about Jesus. Philip, uh, our person that we'll learn about uh, today, went down to a city in Samaria and he proclaimed the Messiah there. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Uh, verse six, when the crowds heard that Philip, uh, crowd, crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who, who were paralyzed or lame, they were healed. So there's great joy in that city because Philip was persecuted, had to leave, went to a place, told about Jesus, God worked in and through him through spiritual gifts, and, and many came to know Jesus. Many lives were touched, and there's great joy in that city. Later on, uh, in, in verse 26, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So uh, Philip was given a command, and an angel of the Lord shared this with Philip. And I guess my, my question as I read this is, was Philip listening? And clearly he was. So then the application for me as I read this is, Am I listening to what God would say to me, to where he would lead me? Great stuff happens when we do. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candake, which means queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. So this Ethiopian eunuch is a very important official, as, as is described. And, and yes, he is the guy in charge of the treasury of Candake, the treasury of Candake, if you were wondering if there were other ones and whatnot. He is in charge of it. So clearly he's important and all that that means. But he's reading the book of Isaiah. And, uh, and, and Philip uh, happens to be uh, in this area. So the Spirit told Philip, in verse 29, the Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. So God's Holy Spirit was guiding Philip, speaking to Philip, whether audibly or otherwise. But this is what God wanted Philip to do. And Philip, walking in step with the Holy Spirit, knew what he ought to do and even the pace he ought to do it. So verse 30 I love Philip's obedience, and, and I believe God honors this in such great ways. 
Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. There's no hesitation there. Hey, I know where I need to go. I know what God is calling me to do. Why do anything else? Why walk when I can run? And so Philip all out goes to this, uh, this chariot and stands near this chariot with a very important official who is reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading, Philip asked? And, uh, you know, part of me was wondering, okay, how did Philip know where he was reading? Was the, was the eunuch, was he, was he reading out loud, or, or did Philip kind of climb the chariot, look over his shoulder, and turns out through reading, reading commentaries and researching this, most of the time when people would read, they would read it out loud. So uh, that's most likely what happened, and prompted Philip to ask into the chariot, do you know what you're reading? You're reading from Isaiah the prophet. Do you, do you, do you understand it? To which the, the Ethiopian eunuch responds, how can I? Unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and to sit with him. Total open invitation that God orchestrated through his person who was walking in step with the Holy Spirit. And this is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading from Isaiah 53. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who could speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. This amazing passage, written hundreds of years before the Messiah, written by Isaiah the prophet, and this happened to be what the Ethiopian eunuch was reading out loud. And Philip is there, and all of this, just this massive coincidence. Yeah, right. God orchestrated all these things. I mean, I mean the fact that Philip, uh, the persecution happened, and, and the church had to scatter. The fact that Philip uh, walked in step with the Holy Spirit and was in this area. The, uh, even that the Ethiopian eunuch would be traveling home at this time from having worshipped in Jerusalem on this road uh, back to Gaza. And then for, for this exact passage of Scripture, I mean, Isaiah is a long book, and it could have been anything, but this is where he was reading. So then the eunuch asks Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or, or about someone else? Was Isaiah talking about himself and what he would go through and whatnot, or was he talking about the Messiah? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. How cool is that? And may we all have opportunities similar to this where someone says, hey, can you tell me more about Jesus? You seem to know, have a relationship with Jesus. Can you, can you speak to me about that? When we walk in step with God's Holy Spirit, watch what happens. So for us today, this was, this was almost 2,000 years ago. But this, these same principles apply to us today. And Paul, in his, letter to, in his first letter to the Corinthians, writes about uh, some of these concepts and, and this fact that God lives in and through his followers uh, through his Holy Spirit. That when we trust in Jesus, we are given God's Holy Spirit to dwell in us and to work through us and to give us spiritual gifts Philip had them. Every follower of Jesus has a spiritual gift or even more. And so Paul writes this very intentionally. And he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led, a former way of life. But now we have God. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God, ever says Jesus is accursed. And no one 
can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. This is a mark of the follower of God. When God's Holy Spirit dwells in us, we, 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 we can say Jesus is Lord and, and mean that. It's impossible for us to, to curse Jesus when we're walking in step with the Spirit. Verse 4, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. Uh, as we look uh, around this room, there's a variety of gifts, even, even present in this place. Different giftings, different talents, different ways that God is, has gifted and is using us. But they all come from God. They all come from, from God's Holy Spirit. There's unity in the gifts. Uh, verse 5, there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. You know, some, it's good for you to work in children's ministry. Others, not so much. For some, it's good for you to work with teens. Others, not so much. And, and, and across the board, for some, it's, it's good to work behind the scenes. For others, it's better to be up front. For, for some, you know, and all these things, different kinds of service. Uh, there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. God has a purpose. He has a plan. He desires unity in his gifts. So let's live them out. To each person, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. This short verse says so very much. And, and Paul describes this. Every single person, every person who, who trusts in Jesus, to each one of them, God's Holy Spirit is given. There is a manifestation of God's Spirit for them, given to them to you and to me. And here's a key concept in this. As we talk about spiritual gifts, as we wonder, God, how, uh, what have you gifted for me? What's a spiritual gift that I have? Key in this, this manifestation of the Spirit, this gift of the Holy Spirit, this spiritual gift for you and for me, it is for the common good. If you're wondering what your spiritual gift is, one of the clearest marks we can ever understand about it is that it's for others. It's for the body of Christ. It's for God's people. It's for others. And, and, and it's not for that individual. It's for the common good. If you see this, this uh, gift in you and you're able to use it just for yourself, it's probably more an ability or something that you've taught yourself. But if we're talking spiritual gifts, something that God works in and through you to do, that, that is for the common good. Uh, continuing on, verse 8. For to one is given the spirit of utterance of wisdom, and to an, another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. To, to another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, works of miracles. To another, prophes prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between, uh, between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, interpretations of tongues. And, and there's all kinds of gifts, but there's one Spirit who provides those gifts. When we trust in Jesus, we have God's Holy Spirit, and God purposes spiritual gifts in us. And so, verse 11, all these, and, and there's so many more than were just listed there, all these are, are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as He, God the Holy Spirit, wills. That is, when we trust in Jesus, there is a work that God is continuing to do in you. He saved you. He's forgiven you of your sins. And now God's Holy Spirit dwells in you and desires to empower you with a gift, with some uh, supernatural ability that you couldn't do on your own, but God, through his Holy Spirit, enables you to have this ability that's for the common good. And part of life's journey is a journey of discovery, and so, how, how do you tell what your spiritual gift is? I'll tell you right now, there's a ton of uh, spiritual gift tests uh, that you can research and do. And, and I've, I've used these, I, I've shared these, I've taken these. And uh, in some ways, they're very, very helpful. But let me, let me caution you 
that it's not a one stop, uh, one and done. That if we, if we try to put on a piece of paper, you know, 20, 50 questions that help us narrow down this, uh, an infinite God working through his people in an infinite number of ways uh, and try to narrow that down to 50 questions, we're, we're going to come up short. And we might pigeonhole ourselves in, in ways that we weren't meant to. So use it as a start. You know, they're not all bad and, and, and all that. But for me, the far greater thing is to be in a group of, of followers of Jesus that you trust and having real conversations and saying, do you know what your spiritual gift is? Um, I, I'm not sure what mine is. Have, can, you, can you mention ways that you've seen God use me? I want to pray about this. I, I want to pursue this. I want to discover this. And maybe this uh, is a gift that I have for a season and, and no longer have, or maybe it's something that God is, you know, however, how is God working through me? Would you honestly share that in ways that he is working, in ways that he isn't? And, and a, a genuine, honest pursuit with each other of these spiritual gifts that are for the common good. It's a great journey, and let's make sure we take part in this. Because once we do know our spiritual gift, we ought to exercise this as we would any muscle or even any ability or talent that we have. You know, if your gift is, is teaching, it, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're, you're the, the greatest teacher uh, that, that would ever exist. But it's meant that you ought to pursue this and practice it. God has worked in and through you on this. Find opportunities to teach get better at this. Consider ways that you can hone your skills and, and do, this, uh, do this better. And let's help each other out in this. If your gift is works and, and helping behind the scenes and, and some way somehow making things happen uh, that, that people oftentimes don't even recognize or don't even know, but God through his Holy Spirit has enabled you to see the need and fill the need, look for ways to hone your skills. See how we can help each other out in this. And this goes for any gift. We ought to exercise it and get better at it and see how God can use us in different ways through this gift. Because again, it's not for ourself, but we need each other to get better at our spiritual gifts. So ask someone who lives this well. If you see somebody who is living out their purpose, this, uh, this God-given purpose, this spiritual gift, and you see them do this well, Ask them about it. Ask them what they see in you. And uh, let's have these conversations. Let's pursue God in this together. And then, as we live this out, and so many of you guys do this so well already, and, uh, but let's live this out together. Let's watch how God uses us. Because when it's uh, up to human ability, we will always have a cap on what we can do. But goodness, when God's people get a hold of this, and we serve God together, and we encourage each other in our spiritual gifts, and we exercise them, and we live them out. An infinite God is going to be able to accomplish infinitely more than we ever could on our own. This is part of God's plan today, here, and now. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be his witnesses locally, regionally, and globally. We have an opportunity to live this out. So let's embrace this. Let's pursue this. Let's, let's enjoy the, the journey of discovery of what does God have in store for you here and now in his purposes through his Holy Spirit. And let's do this journey together. Let me pray for us. Father God, we love you so very much God, we thank you for your purposes and for your plan. We thank you, God, that you seek to involve us. God, that you don't, you don't have to, but, but God, in your, in your wisdom, in your ways, you desire to use us as your witnesses, as your ambassadors. And God, I thank you that you don't leave this uh, to, uh, alone in this task, but God, that your Holy Spirit comes alongside us, dwells within us, and gifts us for the common good, gifts us for your work. 
God, that's amazing. And I thank you that every person has value. Every person who trusts in you has a gift from your Holy Spirit. So Lord, help us on this journey of discovery and exercise of, your, of these spiritual gifts. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray all of this. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to I wanna close uh, with, uh, as we uh, get ready to take offering, I want to close with uh, some quick announcements. First one is, uh, in your bulletin, there is the connection card. And uh, uh, before the ushers come up, yeah, maybe give, uh, give uh, another 60 seconds for people to fill this out. Would you please uh, help us on this great communication tool? If you, uh, uh, let us know what's going on in your world, any prayer requests you might have. Let us know um, as you make commitments, whether it's uh, pursuing your spiritual gift, whether it's a, uh, seeking God in this. Uh, or any other commitments that you would make. Uh, let's, uh, we appreciate this. This has already been helpful, has prompted uh, some great conversations, and so thank you so much for filling out your connection card. Uh, should be uh, pens in the seat and everything. Hey, um, second thing, other announcements. Quizzers, hey, our quizzers traveled yesterday, uh, traveled to Aldersgate, Indiana, and uh, several of them traveled, not the entire group, but uh, this is a, an extra competition over uh, uh, parts of the book of Luke and the entire book of Jonah. And so Don and Lyle McCoon uh, see these guys, uh, talk to them about how our quizzers did. Uh, kudos to our quizzers. I think there's, there's well over a dozen that memorized all their Bible quotes for these, uh, these passages. So give it up for our quizzers. And you guys, thank you so very much. Hey, uh, oh, and ushers, you guys can come forward at this time and begin passing the offering plates. As we do, I want to share with you an opportunity at Renaissance High School as we uh, connect, serve, and give hope. You guys, this great school, this is uh, uh, Teachers Appreciation Week as well as Nurses Week. So uh, kudos to those two professions, and uh, let's look for ways to encourage and uh, thank you, uh, teachers and nurses, for all that you do. Through our connection with Renaissance High School, uh, uh, through our connection with Renaissance High School, here is is uh, an opportunity for us to be a blessing. Thank you cards are out here in the foyer, in the lobby there. Would you take one, fill it out, and just say thank you, teacher, for all that you do. Thank you for building into the students. Uh, we're praying for you. We need a, a couple dozen of you guys to, to do this. Uh, so would you please take that opportunity? Also out there, there's a luncheon that we're going to provide as an encouragement to uh, teachers. And so there will be a sign-up genius. There's a lap laptop out in the lobby. Uh, see Mel Traver if you have any questions on this stuff. But let's Let's look for that uh, great opportunity. Um, also, uh, at Renaissance, we, a second year in a row, we're going to give a scholarship to a mentor student or even two. So if that's of interest for you to, uh, to contribute towards, uh, on behalf of Waypoint, giving the scholarship to a student graduating from Renaissance who has been a part of the mentor group, uh, see me or otherwise just, uh, just donate. But make sure that's clearly marked for Renaissance scholarship. Um, hey, a uh, couple of cool things coming up uh, today and this next weekend. Today, last uh, kids musical. So uh, see Melissa for details on any stuff like that. It might even be sold out, isn't it? It is sold out. Uh, so uh, yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's an arm wrestle competition to see who gets the last tickets or, or whatnot. But, but, <laughs> but all that to say, even if you can't make that, you guys pray for our kids as they communicate this message of God's great love for us. Hey, this uh, Saturday night, Teens for Christ will be here at Waypoint. We've got several teens that are part of this uh, conference singing program. Open invite to, to come, bring a friend, be here 7 p.m. Saturday. Also, we need help with uh, the meal that we're serving. We're, uh, this group comes in, and we're going to serve them uh, a meal as, as a way of saying thank you for being here. So if you can help out with that, sign up in the lobby. Um, uh, working through uh, prayer gathering starts up this Wednesday. So uh, we're uh, prayer gathering that we, we just, prayer is the root of our, of all that we do, of our church, of our fellowship. You know, unless God builds a house, it's labor is labor in vain. Let's pursue God. So one opportunity to do that is this prayer gathering. Come for 30 seconds. Come for the entire hour. It's an invitation to come and pray. This Wednesday, uh, and it's 6 to 7 p.m. Details should be in your bulletin. 
And then I uh, want to let you know uh, Mother's Day is coming up this next Sunday. So uh, let's love and encourage the moms out there. And uh, I think that is all I had. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you around this week.